And an update on a story we brought you yesterday. A top former energy official claims an attack on an American power grid was terrorism. One or more snipers opened fire in April, knocking out 17 transformers that send power to California's Silicon Valley. Officials moved the flow of electricity to another site to stop a blackout, but the man who chaired the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission at the time tells CBS News it could be an omen for a future attack. We have risks on physical security that were evidenced by this attack that have not yet been addressed that need to be addressed, in my opinion, immediately. It is important to note that the FBI does not believe it was an act of terror. Snipers using AK-47s attacking a California power station in the dead of night, an attack some are calling a terror test run that went virtually unnoticed until now. In a front page Wall Street Journal investigation, a retired federal regulator describes the assault at a PG&E transmission substation last year as, quote, the most significant incident of domestic terrorism involving the grid that has ever occurred. The substation near San Jose funnels power to Silicon Valley, home to some of the largest technology companies in the world. A Wall Street Journal timeline shows the assault on April 16th last year started just before 1 a.m. when the attackers cut telephone wires near the plant. At 1.31 in the morning, snipers opened fire, apparently targeting transformers' cooling systems. Ten minutes later, a power plant operator called 911. At 1.45, the transformers started crashing. By 1.50, the attack was over and the gunman vanished. A minute later, police arrived, but they couldn't enter the locked gate, so they ended up leaving. At 3.15 in the morning, a utility electrician arrived to check out the damage. No one has been arrested or charged, but this certainly has rattled the industry. Joining me now is Chad Sweet, who is with the CIA and served as Chief of Staff for Homeland Security Secretary Michael Chertoff. He's also the co-founder and managing principal of the Chertoff Group, a global security firm that consults as part of their jobs uh, with the electric power industry on ways to strengthen security. So, Chad, great to have you today. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be with you. One industry expert describes this event as preparation for an act of war. Do you agree? Well, I think you, you can't rule it out. However, um, if we think of terrorism, obviously, normally, a terrorist would want to claim uh, responsibility for the attack. It's been almost a year since the attack, and no one has claimed responsibility. But that's why uh, they're saying it's a test run, potentially, right? That they were just trying to test the system to see what they could accomplish. No, that's a fair point. I think so. You can't rule that out. Now, the FBI has been uh, investigating the incident. If you look at the sophistication of the attack, uh, it certainly could suggest it's an insider attack. You had to know where these concealed fiber optic stations were that, to make those strategic cuts. Uh, you had the, the attackers clearly had sophisticated knowledge of where to shoot to know how to disable the cooling systems. So it is a very sophisticated attack by any account. But uh, I would stress right now the FBI does not currently uh, categorize this as a terrorist attack. And I, I think we at the Chertoff Group agree that it's too premature. Still, we don't know who did this, right? And here we are coming up on a year since the event. Interesting to note, one of the reasons why there wasn't a whole a lot of press around this is there was no blackout. PG&E was able to work around these transformers going down. In your experience, how prepared is the industry, company specific or otherwise, to deal with an attack like this if it happens again? Well, it's a great question. If you look at the, the math here, basically uh, the Electric Power Research Institute has shown that over the last decade, there's been approximately 2,500 attacks on power lines and substations around the world. Uh, if you think about that, that's about 250 attacks a year. In the grand scheme of all the U.S. transformers, uh, that's less than 0.4 percent. So it's not a high percentage, but the industry is very focused on making sure that even if they are attacked, like you saw in the case of the Metcalf substation, that they're able to be resilient and that they can restore power quickly. So in this case, even though it was a highly sophisticated attack, uh, coordinated, again, focused on knowledge of, the, of fiber optic cables that controlled the industrial control systems, even with that level of sophistication, no power was ever lost in this incident. So that does show you the degree to which the industry is leaning well, forward on, on this issue and resiliency. What is scary, and I'm sure a lot of us think of this, you know, the massive blackouts we have seen in the past. For example, in 2003, massive blackout in the East Coast, and that was, that was caused in part 
by a tree branch, Chad. It wasn't even anything that was a serious attack. So we're talking right now about the ways that some of these companies can prepare if they're attacked. But what about prevention, Chad? Where are we on that? That's a great question. And I think we've all experienced uh, different times where in d different parts of the country, whether it's hurricanes, tornadoes. Uh, and I lived in New York when the brownout happened that you just described. It was it was quite disturbing. It was it, you have these moments where a single tree can hit a substation. And if that's a critical choke point, there can be cascading effects. So what uh, both industry and the government have been working on are modeling out essentially those types of cascading scenarios where they can identify those choke points and industry and government have to re harden those particular uh, choke points. So that's a, a critical part of this. Another part of it is risk-based resiliency. So if we look at the supply of transformers, for example, the industry has leaned forward with a program called the Supplemental Transformer Equipment Program or STEP and that's where they're working to create shared inventory across the country so that different utilities, if they're in an emergency, they know what type of transformer is available elsewhere and they can get it to this emergency site well, in a timely manner. It's, it's comforting to know that, that there are people aware and there are systems in place, but certainly it was unnerving to read about this and the sophistication of this group, whoever they were, and what they were trying to do. Chad, hope to have you back on the program to talk more about this and other topics as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to be with you.